This video is about enzyme structure and function, as enzymes control the body's chemical reactions and are crucial to maintaining metabolism and homeostasis. The topics in this Key Concepts video are an overview of enzymes, the structure of enzymes and how it relates to enzyme substrate specificity, the function of enzymes in catalyzing chemical reactions, how to read activation energy graphs, as well as looking at graphs of different factors affecting enzyme reactions like temperature, pH, and substrate concentration. These key concepts are some of the most important topics covered in the IB biology course. All living things depend on chemical reactions which occur inside and outside their cells. These reactions must be tightly controlled in order to maintain life. Enzymes are responsible for controlling almost all of the metabolic reactions keeping us and all living things alive. Enzymes catalyze or speed up biological chemical reactions, which both build biomolecules through anabolic reactions and break down biomolecules through catabolic reactions. Enzymes are a category of proteins, so they are coded for by DNA, and their production occurs through protein synthesis. Enzyme production via protein synthesis is often stimulated by the environment, so the body does not build enzymes it does not currently need. For instance, lactose, a milk sugar, is digested and broken down by the enzyme lactase. When lactose is present in the digestive tract, it signals the cells surrounding the small intestine to begin producing lactase. Enzymes are globular proteins. Globular proteins are rounded in shape in contrast to fibrous proteins, which are long and linear. Enzymes contain a specific region called the active site, which is a crevice within the protein where the substrate binds. The active site has a complementary shape to the substrate, and as a result, there is enzyme substrate specificity, where each enzyme only reacts with one unique substrate. So, for instance, the enzyme maltase will break down the disaccharide maltose, while sucrase is an enzyme which breaks down the disaccharide sucrose. Even though these saccharide molecules are chemically very similar, each saccharide with its unique chemical structure binds to the active site of a specific enzyme. The binding of the substrates to the active site of the enzyme is limited to a few amino acids whose R groups give them the specific chemical structures and properties to allow them to bind their substrates. While bound, other amino acids interact to form or break bonds in the substrate. Maltase is therefore unable to break down sucrose. This is known as enzyme substrate specificity and is necessary for the specific control the body has in directing metabolic pathways. When a substrate binds to an enzyme, both may change shape slightly to bring the substrate into position to undergo the reaction in a model known as induced fit. The slight shift in the shape of the enzyme and substrate may also be thought of the glove and hand model, where the glove or enzyme is shaped for the hand, but both will flex to move into position. The original model of enzyme and substrate interaction is known as the lock and key model, where the active site of the enzyme matches the substrate exactly and neither changes shape upon binding. It appears that most enzymes follow the induced fit model rather than the lock and key. Now that we've looked at the structure of enzymes, let's further examine how their structures allow them to perform their function of catalyzing reactions. When a substrate binds to the active site of the enzyme, the enzyme will position the substrate so it undergoes a chemical reaction. In anabolic reactions, the enzyme works by holding two reactants together at the correct orientation to facilitate the formation of a chemical bond between the molecules. In catabolic reactions, the enzyme will also work by positioning the molecule to encourage chemical bonds to break. These reactions, which build or break down molecules, would typically occur spontaneously if there were enough energy in the environment. Remember, heat or thermal energy transfers to molecules by increasing their kinetic energy or causing them to move faster. When molecules are moving faster, there are more chances for collisions. 
For molecules to react chemically, they must collide with enough force and at the right orientation for the chemical reaction to occur. Enzymes provide the correct conditions within its structure for a reaction without the need for increased temperatures or other external conditions necessary for the reaction. This lowers the activation energy of reactions and makes reactions more likely to occur. This means living things spend less energy maintaining a high internal heat environment or maintaining specific conditions while also having enough chemical reactions to keep the organism alive. Now we have seen how enzymes lower the energy needed for chemical reactions. Let's see how we can display the information in an activation energy graph. The x-axis here indicates the progress of the reaction, while the y-axis indicates the energy present in the reactants and products. So at this point in the graph, the reaction hasn't occurred yet. Here the reaction is in the process of happening, and here's where the reaction is complete. Notice the energy of the products is lower than the energy of the reactants. This must be a catabolic reaction, as energy was released from chemical bonds breaking as a molecule is broken down into two or more molecules. The peak of the graph here is the activation energy. This is the amount of energy required for this reaction to happen spontaneously. And we measure it as the difference between the energy of the reactants to the peak. Now let's see how this changes with an enzyme present. Notice the activation energy is much lower with an enzyme present. However, the energy present in the reactants and products have not changed. The same amount of energy was released from this reaction, although with an enzyme, far less energy was required to make the reaction happen. So enzymes not only allow the body to control when chemical reactions occur, but they also help the body to conserve energy in every enzyme-controlled chemical reaction by lowering the activation energy of the reaction. Now that we've seen how the energy of an enzyme-controlled reaction can be shown in a graph, let's take a look at some other graphs showing the rate of enzyme-catalyzed reactions and how they are changed depending on a few different factors. Some factors affecting enzyme reaction rates include temperature, concentration of substrates, or pH. Let's take a look at temperature first. This first graph shows the rate of reaction. As the temperature increases, so does the rate of reaction up to a certain point. Then the rate of reaction decreases. This is because as temperature increases, both the enzyme and substrate increase in kinetic energy and as they both move faster, it results in more collisions between them. Increasing frequency of collisions increases the reaction rate, which we see as this positive slope in the first section of the graph. However, at a certain temperature, the hydrogen and ionic bonds can start to break that hold the polypeptide strands in their specific 3D orientation. This causes the enzyme to lose its shape or three-dimensional structure. This process is referred to as denaturing the enzyme or protein. If the active site is no longer the correct shape, the active site will not be a complement to the substrate. The temperature at which the enzyme activity is the highest is called the optimal temperature. At this temperature, which we see as the peak in the graph, the frequency of collisions between enzyme and substrate is at the greatest rate and temperature has not negatively affected the structure of the enzyme. Increasing the temperature beyond the optimal temperature will affect the enzyme structure and quickly reduce the reactivity of the enzyme, resulting in a steep decline and asymmetrical curve in the graph. A pH graph is similar in shape to the temperature graph. However, the bell-shaped curve is symmetrical on either side of the optimal pH. Recall pH is a measurement of hydrogen ions relative to hydroxide ions. Ions chemically react with enzymes, causing a change in their structure. When the protein is denatured or unfolds, the active site is altered and cannot bind to the substrate. Different enzymes will have different optimal pH ranges. For instance, digestive enzymes like this one in blue 
are found in the stomach and are evolved for optimal function in very acidic or low pH environments. Here we see the optimal pH is 2, while digestive enzymes like this one in orange found in the small intestine are evolved to function optimally in a higher or more neutral pH of 7. The concentration of substrates has a graph with a different shape of the line. In the beginning of this graph, we notice a positive slope where the substrate concentration increases, so does the reaction. This is expected, as if there is more substrates, there are more chances for collisions with enzymes. However, this graph levels out with no slope. At this point, all the enzymes are being used at maximum capacity. We cannot increase the reaction rate with more substrate, as there are no enzymes available to catalyze the reaction. In this video, we looked at an overview of enzymes and saw how they are a type of globular protein whose function it is to catalyze reactions to control the metabolic activities inside and outside of cells. We saw how the structure of an enzyme is crucial to its function, as the active site is specific to the substrate it catalyzes. We saw how enzymes lower activation energies of reactions and how to interpret graphs displaying that information. Finally, we saw how temperature, substrate concentration, and pH impacts enzyme reaction rates in different ways.